All right, everyone, it's time to review Borat 2. Now, normally I don't do, like, film reviews and stuff, but because of the crossover with Giuliani, with one scene from the movie, which I'll explain, I figured I would do a review of the movie, like an honest review, because right now people on the left are acting like it's, it's you know, Oscar-worthy, and people that are more right-leaning are like, well, it's just a hit piece, a smear movie, it's talentless will. So I'm going to give my honest appraisal of it, because, like, I've watched Borat, Bruno, and The dicta uh, Dictator. Um, and I'll, I'll sort of cross it over with the ratings that I'd give them. Spoilers definitely in this video, so if you haven't seen Borat 2 and you don't want me giving away elements of the plot or something, um, you should probably tune this out, watch the movie, and then you can watch this. Or, or you can just like, you know, you can do what a liberal typically does and just, you know, la 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 and close your ears and refuse to listen to me while watching me silently on mute or something. Anyway, uh, the ultimate score I'm going to give this movie a five and a half or a six out of ten. And let me frame that uh, in perspective. That would be a, an okay movie, a pretty good movie. Not great, but also like better than mediocre. And I'll frame that in, in terms of the other three main movies that it compares to. The first Borat I would have given a seven and a half. I would have given Bruno an eight. I thought that was a really great hysterical movie. The Dictator I'd give like a two. Um, and, and that's a mercy two, trust me. The reason why this movie is considerably less funny than the initial Borat isn't because it's recycling the character. Actually, they pull it off pretty well, for the most part, recycling Borat in the context of the plot. And I think that Maria uh, Bakalova, I believe her name is, did a very good job as well. Some people are like, well, she's annoying, they should scrap that character. I, I actually thought it worked. The reason why I would give it much lower marks than the initial Borat is specifically because too much of the movie was geared towards the obviously scripted parts. And there were parts that were supposedly unscripted that I can tell you definitely were. Like when he randomly asked to live with a couple of rednecks and he's like dancing around with a dildo and nothing else on. I, I hazard a guess that that was scripted and that those are actors and probably not uh, uh, impromptu. And that's why the initial movie Borat and, and Bruno were so funny. A lot of the content of those movies was unscripted. It, was, it relied upon heavily editing people's reactions to the character. In this movie, there was not enough meat on the bones for me to justify giving it a great score. But it was still good, because what was there, like when they're talking to the abortion count, the, I mean, the, the family crisis pregnancy counselor, um, because of course she's swallowed, it, again, spoilers, uh, the actress has swallowed accidentally a small plastic baby from the top of a cupcake, and he's like, oh, I put a baby inside my daughter. Oh, you've never done that? Yeah, she wants the baby out. And of course, the dude's like, what the fuck is going on? That was funny. The Giuliani part was genuinely funny. The problem is, here's, here's why people on the right aren't, aren't quite getting it. The reason why Cohen put out that particular little clip and the picture of Giuliani tucking his shirt in, and there was no hanky-panky going on. Uh, there was nothing, Giuliani literally did nothing wrong. The reason that that was used is because Giuliani was already big in the news. Well, if you've got a news story and you've got a piece of your movie that deals with it, why wouldn't you put a clip out about it? It just makes sense. You know, you make extra uh, hundreds of thousands of ticket sales, or you would if there weren't a pandemic. I guess it's only on Amazon Prime particularly. Uh, you know, more people watch it. They're like, oh my God, it's a Giuliani expose. Well, I need to see the whole clip. Again, though, that that part definitely is unscripted. Uh, we know that. It's sort of like what he did with Ron Paul in the, in the Bruno movie, which I thought was funny, and Ron Paul's reaction <laughs> stole the show, actually, at the time. It's a funny movie. But there are far fewer funny parts because most of the movie is Borat and, and, and Maria Bakalova acting and it's scripted. Whereas in the first Borat movie, most of the movie was going out and making fun of different groups of people. Like the famous rodeo scene with the uh, Kazakh national anthem and stuff. Pissing people off, getting their reactions. And it is heavily edited. You have to edit it down because if you get an hour of footage, you're going to get like one minute of laughs. If you're using this strategy. It takes a lot of work. I can appreciate that. Bruno Bruno was the same way. I thought it was funnier, and I'm in the minority on that. But, you know, me and Liz watched Borat, too. And and I think we've watched Borat 1 and Bruno, correct? I think, yeah. But I don't think you've ever seen The Dictator, right? Yeah. Don't bother, because it's shitty. Uh, and then, and by the way, the reason why The Dictator falls short is it was explicitly scripted. The whole movie, from front to back, was acting. That takes away the funniest quality of the initial movie, and, and you're going to understand it's kind of a hard act to follow with the first Borat movie, too, because it was more than just a movie. It was you got to understand, we're talking about the middle of Bush's second term. 
right-wing politics and televangelism still a thing. It was sort of a cultural thing. I mean, I'm sitting there reading Mad Magazine and stuff at the time, and it's all over TV. It's being talked about in magazines and stuff. Borat was a cultural phenomenon. Sort of like Zeitgeist or something like that. It went beyond just being a film. Bruno a little bit less so. Bruno, I think, was more crass, and people didn't accept it as much because they're like, you know, they thought it was homophobic and stuff like that. And I realized that Cohen is a liberal, um, pro censorship liberal, unfortunately, at this point. He, he sort of sold out in that regards. And I realized that there is a double standard because of his political leanings. Um, he's able to get away with crude tropes and stereotypes that other comedians would get deplatformed for. That doesn't mean that the movie's not funny, though. It's just not as funny. I would recommend seeing it, but it's the kind of movie maybe you watch it again. Like like a five out of five, uh, uh, five or six out of ten movie is like it was enjoyable enough to justify the time you put into watching it, but it doesn't have the same quality the original two movies Borat and Bruno uh, had. So that's my honest review of the movie. Worth watching. You should probably check it out. But would I watch it again? Uh, I think I'd just watch a handful of clips from it because there were only four or five parts of the movie that were genuinely really funny, as opposed to you get dozens and dozens of them from the initial Borat, and I would argue more from Bruno. Bruno was basically slapstick from front to, to end. The entire movie was one uproarious long laugh at this particular character, and there wasn't really, there weren't a lot of scripted parts either. I think there were less scripted parts in Bruno than the first Borat. Again, a reason that I would find it funny. It's sort of like the same kind of humor you get with like soundboard prank calls or something, which I'm a big fan of. This movie, good, not great. That's about all. Peace out.